Well, hello and welcome to the half square antenna. The antenna that allows you to work the world from a small garden. Simple to install and it's got 3 dB of gain. Check it out. Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. About two months ago I did a video on the half square antenna and uh, it's, it's an antenna that really hasn't been that popular. There's not too many mentions of it in textbooks and there's not too much about it on the internet. But since the publication of my video there's been a lot of interest uh, in it and one or two other channels have popped up and uh, mentioned it. Well in the video that I did um, I started off with the 20 meter version which you can see on the screen now. The 20 meter version is 10 meters long and it's about 5 meters high and the whole antenna is raised off the ground by about a meter or so. And I suggest you actually check that original video and I'll put a link to that video below this one. But I want to show you a few sort of tricks that you might want to look at and uh, perhaps um, extend the operation of your antenna. Before we go any further, let me tell you how it seems to have worked for me. I've had it in operation now for about three months. And uh, I originally started, uh, well, earlier this year with a reference antenna, which was a vertical, a vertical antenna um, with about eight radials on the ground, and that worked okay. It was it was fine. I worked I worked all over the place with it. it. You know, it worked as I expected. But I was never that happy with it because I had a reference antenna in the air. I had a half wave end fed, which was uh, 20 meters long, and therefore it covered the 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands. And I was using 20 meters as, as a reference, and I was never really happy with the vertical because very often. In fact, more often than not, the end-fed half-wave, which was only about 10 metres in the air, was better than the ground-mounted vertical, even with the eight radials. And then I decided to raise that vertical off the ground, and that made a tremendous difference. Um, if you lift a, radio, lift a vertical off the ground and use tuned radials, even if it's only about two or three metres above the ground, um, it makes a dramatic difference. So I learned from that that basically if you can have a vertical antenna, don't sit it on the ground, try and get it above the ground and use some, some resonant radials. Not everybody wants to go down that path because you've got radials above the ground. On the other hand, you don't need that many radials. Two radials per band is fine. So if you want to improve the performance of your vertical, get it off the ground. But then I was um, guided towards the half square, an antenna which I'd heard of, but I'd never actually used. And I was really amazed at the performance. On 20 metres you get around about 3 dB of gain. And that gain is in two directions. It's, it's at 90 degrees to the run of the wire. So if the wire runs north-south, you get the directivity east-west. And you get about 3 dB of gain in both directions. And that certainly works better for me than even the raised vertical. And not only that, it is not a very large antenna. And then, if you look at my original video, you'll find that I actually uh, arranged it so that I fed it at the bottom of one end of the antenna as effectively an end-fed uh, antenna. And it becomes an end-fed half square on 20 metres and an end-fed uh, wire antenna on the other bands. So because the total length of the antenna is 20 metres, you've got a, a 5 metre top section, 10 metre um, sorry, 5 metre uh, vertical, 10 metre top section and a 5 metre vertical at the other end. That adds up to 20 metres and 20 metres of wire end fed will work on 40, 20, 15 and 10 metres. I hope you're with me. <laughs> Check out that video anyway. Anyway, let's have a look and see what else you might want to do with your half square antenna designed originally for the 20 metre band but cover another moment for bands. One end of my antenna is supported by the spider mast and then I use the fiberglass spider pole for the support at the other end and that really is a rugged mast. I removed the top couple of sections in order to make it more rigid but it's really rugged. 
I also found that the ferrite choke at the feed point you can see here is absolutely essential. Moving over here onto the uh, drawing table, I've got my antenna supported between two masts. Uh, each mast is six meters tall. And the antenna runs, uh, it starts at one meter above ground, so it goes up there and the antenna goes across there and down the other side of the mast. Um, this mast here is metal, so I've terminated the antenna about a metre away and it comes down like that, lined up with a little insulator and just fastened to the ground. So that's basically the antenna. It means on 40 metres the antenna is only 6 metres high, which is a bit low really, although it works extremely well for um, a sort of a short skip up to sort of three or 400 miles. What you can do is you can move these legs in slightly if you want to and because there's a natural sag anyway on any wire going between two masts if you move those in and if you have access to lightweight masts you could actually raise the centre of the antenna like that say up to about eight metres so you could have the centre of the antenna eight metres above the ground and that would give you pretty good performance on 40 metres, certainly similar to what uh, a lot of uh, stations uh, um, uh, get with their antennas, because a, a lot of stations have only got their antennas up around about 8 metres, and it works very well on 40 metres, no problem at all. But here's the clever bit. Let's go back, to, let's forget the mast at the moment. Our antenna is 5 metres up there, it's 10 metres along there, and it's five meters down there and we're feeding at that point there a high impedance point we're feeding it with a 49 to 1 uh, unun well we could add 80 meters now there's two ways of adding 80 meters to this antenna one way is to put a loading coil there which is a choke coil put it at that point there because that's fairly low down you could achieve similar 80 meter operation by putting the choke coil, not choke coil, the, well it is a choke coil really, um, up there. Let's forget that one for the moment. That would give us 80 meters. That coil there needs to be about 100 microhenries. And that length of wire there will be around about 2 meters. You'll have to adjust that. So if we have our basic antenna like that, which we've already got covering four bands, and we add a choke, 100 microhenry uh, coil there, it acts as a choke on all bands apart from 80 meters, but on 80 meters it lets the RF go through, and with that resonator section there, we've got resonance on 80 meters as well. So we effectively have got an antenna which covers 80 through to 10 meters. And uh, you'll have to experiment a bit with that, but as I say, if you start off with, an, with a 100 microhenry coil, that should be about right, and then a length of wire there around about 2 metres. So there you have it. You've got an antenna that fits in a pretty small garden. The antenna itself is only 10 metres long, horizontally, and it only requires a support of about 6 metres high which again is very modest and uh, is usually easily accommodated in most smallish gardens you can add 80 meters to it by adding a hundred microhenry coil and uh, a short length of resonator section around about two meters long you'll find the uh, dimensions for a hundred microhenry coil on the internet just type in coil calculator and you'll find it and you can you can adjust the turns uh, according to the diameter of the form you wind it on. Of course, on 80 metres, it will be fairly narrow banded. You'll probably get a, a bandwidth of around about 100 kilohertz, maybe a bit more. So if you centre the antenna on uh, 3.750, that gives you um, a reasonable coverage of popular part of the 80 metre band for SSB operation. 
The antenna works extremely well. It certainly uh, is a great small garden antenna. On 20 meters, you get a little bit. Of, well, say a little bit of gain. You get you get about three or four dB of gain, which is well worth having. And uh, my garden runs uh, north south, so the antenna fires east west, which is not uh, not too bad actually. And as I say, it works extremely well. Um, I've found that it works far better than the two verticals I tried in the garden. The verticals work, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, if you want to go down the vertical road, go down the vertical road. But this particular antenna is very simple, very easy to erect. And the only outlay really is the support masts and the 49 to one unun. Now you can make a 49 to one unun yourself and you may be able to use um, the house as one end of the antenna. Do make sure if you can, that if that antenna is near the house, that that vertical leg is a couple of meters away from the house at least. And likewise, if you use a metal mast um, at one point for the support, make sure you leave, you leave at least a meter space between the mast and the vertical section. And I'm sure that you've got your own ideas of how you can fit it into your garden. You can't really bend it around this antenna. You've got to, you've got to, You've got to erect it as is. It's got to be a 10 meter straight run of wire um, and then the two ends dropping down uh, five meters each end. You can move those those ends in a bit and raise it in the middle. That doesn't really uh, uh, do uh, any any sort of, it doesn't, doesn't deteriorate the operation, it doesn't um, reduce the operation at all. And here's a bonus you get with this antenna. It is incredibly quiet. I noticed a significant drop in noise level at my location when I switched to this antenna. It's the quietest antenna I've used. So if you've got a small garden and you erect this antenna, you've got the additional bonus. It's quiet as well. Great. I uh, hope it's given you some ideas and I, said, I think it's a great antenna for a small garden. Um, I've used it now for about three months and uh, I said I've done some A-B comparisons and uh, it works extremely well. Maybe the ultimate, I think I said that in the original video, the ultimate small garden HF antenna. Well, maybe, maybe it is. There's no easy way of uh, operating on the um, walk bands on the uh, 30 meter band, um, the uh, 70 meter band and 12 meter band. Uh, I think on 12 metres you might be able to uh, get it to operate because 12 metres is pretty close to 10 metres um, and you can try 17 metres how you get on um, but don't run too much power because uh, the 49 to 1 unun might start to heat up. But there we are, it's a great antenna for the small garden. It's one of the few antennas that gives you gain with very very little outlay and it's well worth having. So, thank you for your support on this channel, as usual. You take care. Joy Ham Radio. Don't forget to check out our website. There's some all sorts of deals on there. And if you want to do a deal on a new radio or you want to do part exchange, then pick up the phone and give one of our sales guys a ring. They, um, they're very friendly guys, and they're all licensed hams. So, there we are. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye.